Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to the last video in our beginner Ableton course. For the last part of our video, I'm gonna go over some of the sub menus as well as the preferences just to kind of give you guys a final rounded view at Ableton. So we've got a lot to get into. Let's just dive right into it. So first and foremost, if you hit the live button here, the first option you're gonna get is preferences. Now you're gonna be going to preferences a lot in your Ableton journey, so do memorize that command comma is a nice workaround. So the first tab in the preferences is your look and feel. And this has several important options from the zoom display, which will actually enlarge or shrink your view so you have more screen space. I like to keep mine at 125 because I do a lot of teaching. What else I find important in here is different color schemes for Ableton from light, mid light, mid dark. Dark I personally like to use, it's easier on the eyes, but you have all these options here. And I find that to be the most important option here. Next is your audio preferences. Now this is gonna be really important because this is where you pick your output. So right now, this is going to my built-in output, which is my headphones, and my input is the built-in microphone on my computer. But this is where you can change that if you wanna have a sound card or something else routing into Ableton or you routing out of Ableton, this is where you're gonna set this up. Now the next important thing I think is in the sub menu for beginners is actually the buffer size here. And what this does is it actually slows down your computer if it's working too hard um, and adds a bit of latency, a bit of delay into Ableton, but it makes it so your computer isn't working as hard, gives it a bit of time to think. So if your Ableton starts crackling and weird things like that, you can uh, change the buffer here. Mine's a big one because I'm recording a video and I don't want Ableton to work too hard, for example. Next is your link MIDI. Here's where you can set up MIDI controllers. Now, I'm not gonna get too deep into this uh, as well, but this is where you're gonna be able to connect your APC, your Ableton push, whatever it is. You're gonna be able to set up how this works in this menu here. Now, we're not gonna get deep into it. We're not gonna set up a controller in this video, um, but that's where it is. Here's your file folder. Now, this is pretty important for a few reasons. One, you can save a current session. So you can set up Ableton the way you want it to, and you can hit save, and Ableton will always uh, show up that way, which I find is really nice. And below, you can scan for plugins if it, you have new plugins you're starting to use. I find that also quite useful. Um, below that, you can set up your Ableton library, where if Ableton's not registering its library, you can set up where that is here. Below that are some really important things. This is your record warp launch tab. So first things first, you're gonna set up the file type as well as the bit depth, which is the quality of what's being recorded in Ableton, super important. You can set up a count-in if you're recording, um, which is really important. And you can set up if your solo or your arming is exclusive. So if you can have one thing soloed at a time or one thing armed at a time, I don't have that on personally, but that's up to you. Um, in the warp fade section, you can actually set an automatic warp mode. Mine's always set to beats mode. And a really important one I recommend turning off is creating fades on clip edges, which will actually automatically add little fades to your clips, which personally, uh, if you're a beginner, you might not know that, and it might be detrimental taking away from the transience of your sound. So I recommend turning that off personally. Now those are all the important parameters, at least for a beginner, that I recommend taking a look at. Uh, there are more in here, but we're not gonna go into them right now. Now next to the live menu, you have your file menu. This is where you're gonna create new live sets, you're gonna open live sets, you're gonna open recent live sets. Um, this is where you're gonna save, save as if you wanna save a new one. And uh, really important, collect all and save. And what this does is this is where you're going to save samples to your session, uh, which is really important if you're gonna try working on a different computer or something like that. And lastly, this is where you're going to export. Now, exporting is when you take your final song and you export it to a final render that you can hear. And how it works is you highlight a desired amount of time, uh, you export that amount of time, and then you have a few options. You can render the master tracks with the master output or individual tracks if you so desire, or all individual tracks if you want stems for say remixing or sending to collaborate. Um, from here, you can select the sample rate, so uh, kind of a quality option for your export. 
Um, I have normalize on, and this is because I was exporting samples. What normalize does is it takes the loudest peak of your song and it makes sure that hits zero and everything is adjusted respectively. Uh, zero decibels, I should clarify. Uh, below you pick the file type. I always export as wave. I like wave. And here you select the bit depth, which is also, without going into detail, another option for quality. You can also export as MP3 here. Or if you're working with video files, export a video. You select your options and you hit export. Now, in the edit option, this is where you have, uh, you know, cut, paste, copy, undo, redo, duplicate, all things you should be mastering as key commands. But if you're unsure of where those exist, they're in the edit section. The create section is where you can insert MIDI tracks, uh, insert audio tracks, um, options like that. It's going to be really important. View is going to toggle all your different windows. So I previously, in previous videos, showed you how you could toggle that. But if you're unsure of where one is or you're missing one, the view option is going to have those as well. You have some important options such as uh, reducing latency when monitoring. So when you're monitoring a signal coming in, it's going to reduce the uh, delay. So if you're recording vocals, that's going to be important. Um, some other important features such as snapping to grid, uh, changing your grid size. Uh, again, all things you should be mastering as key commands, but in case you haven't yet, that's there. And lastly, a final help window. So. I know that was kind of a, a quick run through it all, but I didn't want to go into too much detail with all the help menus and preferences. So there we go, guys. That was the final video in our beginner Ableton course. That wasn't a t this wasn't a course on how to make music in Ableton. It wasn't super deep on all the instruments and effects, but you should have a basic rough understanding of how everything works in Ableton, where everything is, and uh, hopefully you can start importing sounds and writing music. So thanks guys, I'm Kermode. If you haven't grabbed my beginner sample pack, make sure to in the description of this video, it's gonna be everything you need to start writing music. And if you like this course, let me know in the comments below, maybe give it a like, give it a share, and I'll be back with more videos to educate you guys on your Ableton journey. So thanks again guys, I'm Kermode. Peace.